Welcome back to Zane and Heath Unfiltered. Before we start today's episode, we have a huge, huge announcement. We you guys have been so waiting pumped. a very long time for this, but we finally have a new flavor. Let's of, go, baby. Of Cremota Coffee. We have the espresso blend. You guys have been asking for this for a long time. We finally got it to happen. And what's really exciting is that it it comes in ground coffee. Yeah. And then we also have whole beans now exactly. for the espresso blend. And it is so good like i'm not i don't want to gas it up but like this is this is like good quality espresso coffee yeah. it is incredible we just have a, we just had a little setup today at our house oh my god um, just to have a barista come and just have fun with our uh, espresso blend and guys it is i'm not like not even like it is so delicious it is it's so insane. good i'm super excited for you guys to try it it's going to be available at cremoda.com today right now so make sure you go to cremota.com make sure to get yourself a bag of either ground coffee or whole beans however you'd like to make it and yeah we can't wait to see how you guys like it and send us send us uh, reviews and send us footage of you guys yes. making it we really want to see it and not only that we also have a brand new bonus episode on our patreon it's a drunk episode with kelsey and noelia and it is so funny it is hilarious you can check it out at patreon.com slash zane and heath for five dollars a month you can get not only that episode but you get a ton everything of bonus we've episodes. ever posted on patreon you'll have access to exactly uh, as soon as you sign up we got high episodes we got vlogs we got live q and a's and we got the private Discord chat also. So make sure to get all that for five dollars a month, and make sure to check out the new episode that will be um, that will be posted tonight. Actually, not right now, but tonight, Tuesday. So again, that's Patreon.com/slash Zane and Heath to check it out. Let's get to the episode, baby. Do you ever think though you could be kidnapped? Um, I feel like someone, no. I feel like I have nothing to offer. Oh, I'm the type of person if there was like a van and they're like, "Hey, can you help just uh, lift this couch in?" Sorry, I'm. I'd be like, "Yeah, no problem." Oh, no, no way. Heave ho and. <laughs> and and it's right on you. Yeah, no way. I, I don't trust anything. Anybody. I used to. I used to help people without hesitation. Anybody Mar that asked. I picked up hitchhikers. Yeah, I was bad. Mariah. Mariah. Well, bad. it was a different time. It was a different time. Some <laughs> random guy on the side it of the road walking. Time. Hey, do you need a ride? Like where where was this? Like, yeah. What if God was, was one, one of us? us? But was That's it, what I was it like a safe area? What did did the, this person look? Safe. It was just a kid my age walking in the snow and there was no even way. worse. <laughs> That's how they it get was you. right by my high school. It's just like, I don't know. Oh, okay. It okay. was like, it was like midnight though. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> you were like, can I see some school ID? I it's just, also, it's also like, it was also midnight. You don't want to, him to, I wanted to follow my mom's footsteps. She picks up people all the time. She brings them back to the house. Like she bathes them she, dancing yeah. with the dog. No, no, seriously. <laughs> like she'll, she'll invite them into shower. Yeah. And I don't do that anymore. Like I hate to say it, but like such a pick man. <laughs> you help that. strangers. <laughs> you, you, you do the nicest thing possible. Pick now, me. do you think if you were in a situation and you had to hitchhike, do you think you are presentable enough to I, get someone's attention? It's no, not, not easy. Me. I've only hitchhiked one time, and it was it was damn near impossible. It was at Yosemite when we we just finished the trail, oh. and we had like another like five miles to walk, and I was like, I can't do this. I need to get to the car, and we sat there on the corner. Just thumb up, just wait in. And everybody's looking like, are they really hitchhiking right now? Like nobody's gonna pick you up. And then this little like family rolled around and was like, Do you actually need a ride? And we're like, Yes. Like they thought we were joking. Oh. Yeah. They're like, do you really need a ride? And we were like, Yes, please. Um, and then we hopped in. It was uh the couple, and then they had two kids in the car, and we all just like squeezed into the back. Like we're the Millers. Yeah. yeah. You know what, Heath? I you probably had all that REI shit on that expensive shit. Oh, so they were like, yeah, you probably looked like you had like expensive gear on because you did. Yeah, but and, like it it's still like uh, I don't know something about national parks. You're already and in a s people disappearing though. Oh. I feel like it's very. I mean, we've seen it happen already. Like very kind of sketchy place to be doing that. I am um, so extremely aware of my surroundings nowadays. Like my yeah. head gotcha. doesn't stop moving. <laughs> I'm so careful with where I park. I like, as soon as like, I'll unlock my car, I'll open it. I'll I'll take a giant step in so no one cuts my Achilles tendons <laughs> in my car. As soon as I'm in the car, lock that, button, that close rumor, the door. That rumor went around. I remember that I, shit. I remember spreading. that scene in I, the House of Wax, the one with like Paris oh, Hilton. Oh, Paris Hilton, yeah. Where that guy slices that, his Achilles. That stuck with I dive into my Yeah, yeah. I jump in. I flip in. No, it's really like, it's scary. 
Uh, I well, feel stay like every, aware, everybody's people. out to get everybody. Yeah. Spooky yeah, even, season. Even just the people getting robbed outside of like nice restaurants. Yeah, Jordan it, just got robbed. Oh yeah, I forgot. Here, let's do the intro real quick and I'll tell you that story. It's, it's insane. Mm. Oh, I'm fired up, baby. Let's go. It's Kavito, baby. Woo! <laughs> You guys are robbing each other. <laughs> well, okay, that's quick. You guys do that every episode. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I was gonna well, welcome back to Zane and Heath Unfiltered. I'm Zane. I'm Heath. I'm Matt. I'm Mariah. And we are Unfiltered. Thank you again for tuning into another mm. episode. Ooh, we got so much to talk about. Thank we, you so much for coming to another episode. Well, yeah, we got a lot to cover. Um, but I want to talk about Jordan getting robbed the other day. He's in Target just shopping around and he has his phone in his cart and I guess he like turned around for a second and somebody came and just swiped it out of his cart without <sighs> him knowing. He was, he was in line to pay. Yeah. So he was getting his stuff on the belt. So right? he has he has his phone and then a work phone. Um, right. So they took the work phone. Um, so at least he had his second one to be able to like make a call or, you know. Yeah. He, yeah. Try to get to the bottom of this. But he got into his car, left, and then was like, wait a minute, where's my other phone? That's really weird. So he goes back and he's like, at Target, he's like, something happened. Like, my phone disappeared. Uh, can we, like, check the security tapes? And they were, like, super hesitant to, to help him at first. And then he just, like, fights for it, fights for it. And then finally, they're like, uh, okay, yeah, we do have footage. Uh, somebody walks up behind you and grabs it out of the cart. Damn. And he's like, can I have the footage so I can go to the police? And he, they, they're like, oh, no, we can't give you the footage. That's ridiculous. So, is that, so what can he do then? You So he... Called the police. They put him on hold for 45 minutes. And he's like, this is absurd. Like, I need my phone. And on Find My iPhone, he could see exactly where the phone is. Like, it was at a house, like, a couple miles away. And I'm just like, this, because you can't just, like, show up and, like. My phone's here. <laughs> gotcha. Like, you know what I mean? Or and it's, it's just that person, unsafe. like, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so. Is there a reward? <laughs> so he is dealing with that. He calls the phone. Somebody answers and is like. Hey, yo, I'm busy. I'm at work. I, I can't talk right now. <laughs> and he's like, I just need my phone. And they're like, I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get in trouble. I, I got I to get back to work. Sorry, though. And he's <laughs> like, I'll pay, I'll pay you for the phone. Like, just I'll give you 50 bucks. Just let me meet you at work and I'll just give me my phone back. He's like, keep that 50 bucks I in I mind. Like that, I like that 50 buck idea. Keep that in mind. Uh, I'll hit you up later. But so calm, cool, and collected this guy. Like, like he was just what? like, was this the guy that you, that took so it, or this was just somebody else? To three. Every time Jordan called, it was like three different people. Insane, huh? So, In different so this voices. is the whole operation kind of thing. I seems guess. like it because it get, it kind of um, hooks you where you're like, yeah. they have it. They seem interested, but they're yeah. not saying. Oh, yes you know to what? They off. do three different people probably. So you it, it makes you Keeps not you want to trail. go to grab it because if you hear three outnumbered. different people, you're outnumbered. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. <laughs> he calls he calls the cops and they're like, we can't do anything about it. But a cop that heard the phone call called Jordan personally and said, yeah. hey, I want to help you out. Just show up to the police station and ask them to escort you to this guy's house. OK, simple. It's right by his house, this police station. Yeah. So Jordan shows up. They basically laugh at him and they're like, mm, I don't know who told you that, but we can't do that. They're like, no, like, it's not worth so our time. So Jordan was like, if I show up at this guy's house and something happens, that's on you. Like, what What am I supposed, I'm just asking for an escort, like down the street. That's like, insane. Just, like, that makes no sense. Like, you got the location of the phone, just. I would love to be on like the phone police squad. Like, just <laughs> yeah. be like, oh, they, they have your phone? Well, let's go get them. Well, like, well let's get said. to the bottom of this I thing. Said, it's a simple crime. Yes, you knock and go, just here to ask some questions. Who was the phone? Like, and who knows, you might even get something bigger because they're fucking stealing seems all like these a ring. Yeah. yeah. I said that, I said there should be another position for minor crimes like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Because yes, it's not that serious, but it's still like- It's serious it's to something Jordan. something to be solved. It's a lot I, of money. It's, it's, it's but a, like it's, that- It's a thousand dollar phone. Like that's exciting. I like you yeah, have- I would you love have a, that. You have like a, a clear lead. You have the location of the phone. I'd be like, let's okay. fucking go. Yeah, the, Book pieces, on. the yeah. pieces are there. Let's put it Yeah, together. this this is going to add to my quota for today. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it's much better than just like What'd you turning do? on a traffic si or <laughs> speed signal. And and, and, they're, and they're probably looking at it as one phone. You could be getting a whole fucking like drug, but like you Ooh. have no idea, no idea. what it's Okay, so wait, we got to continue because that's only okay. halfway. All right, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So then uh, they're like, no, we're not going to help you. And then Jordan's calling me. We're flying in from Pennsylvania. I'm like, I wish I was there to help you. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you got to like either wait till I get there or 
I, I don't know what to do. And then finally he gets a hold of the person again and it's another person on the phone and they're like, all right, so you want to buy this phone back? And he's like, oh, like yeah, they're, they're literally my phone, not like, this And Jordan phone. was honest with him. He was like, I'm a little nervous about showing up to this and that. And he goes, what are you scared of? I'm a nice guy. He said I'm he was like the creepiest. Very penny like, wise. I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Like, I'll, I'll I, could, I could easily sell this Jordan, phone. Jordan, do the impression really quick. He, he thinks he's in a fucking I movie. Know, right, just here. do the impression really quick. So now he's waiting for. Okay, this, this is what he sounded like. Hey, hey, I'm I'm a nice guy, okay? I wouldn't do that. I I wouldn't. Uh, uh, um, you know how much this phone is worth? I could sell this. I'm only asking for fifty, just fifty. It was very what? Like that. And then and then it was uh, like um. All right, when I asked him to like, let's go to Target, it was very, um, yeah, we can do that. Just, you know, make sure everything's cool. No funny like, business. No, no funny business, he said. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't call the cops to try Just to like. Every, every, every time he spoke, he gave me a threat afterwards. This but man it was, thinks he's it a was joker. Like, yeah, it was, a, it was very oh, joke. it's a hustle. It was like talking, yeah. yeah. They agree to go meet at Target. Jordan's in there. He's trying to get cash out to pay for the 50 bucks for the phone. Well, first of all, they no, they show up at Target and this guy is standing with Jordan in line just talking yes. to him like He it's shows up crazy. He, he shook his shook hand. Shook his hand. Like it's crazy to think people around them have no idea that Jordan's held hostage right now. <laughs> but he said it, it was like the scariest guy, like six foot four, like really, really pale, and his face was smashed in. Like his nose was completely crushed. He said and it like looked like it flattened. was broken, but he didn't get it fixed. Like he looks like he yeah. just like broke just it. like mm. like. But he's standing in line with Jordan, like, see, I told you I'm a good guy. And like saying these things, like, I would have fucking shit my pants. It's crazy how this is happening when and the cops just didn't do anything like you're Nothing. a whole thing is happening i wonder if target is seeing the footage like oh my, <laughs> god. Oh my god just but this is the crazy part so jordan was having trouble getting cash out he was just he was like i need to buy something to get like cash so jordan turns to him and says do you want anything he's like pick something so then. now he's shopping around the candy section and the thing he grabs is Bubble yum. With the freaking duck. With the oh my God. God. We just, if you're confused, we just talked about this last episode. And we haven't talked, like, I haven't thought about that gum in How 15 years. How none of us realized the, the bubble yum duck was like punk rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys been realizing that whenever we talk about something, something happens the very yeah. next fucking week? I, you don't say. It's happened like five <laughs> times already. Uh, it's strange. But yeah. then I feel like it's good. I, There's I momentum. think it's amazing. There's yeah. momentum yeah. in the universe. I think it's universe. great. So, if I saw him pick that up, like Jordan was nervous. I would have No, I would have been relieved because I think that way. I'm like, we je there's no way this is a coincidence. I would have just been like, okay, I'm good. This is going to be just fine. So oh, he no, bought no, the no. gum. I thought it was leading to my death. Yeah, uh, he was nervous. I, I mean, I would be, I'd be, I'd be shitting my pants too if I was you. If I was next to him and I knew that I, I was hopeless and nobody w could help me out right now, I don't have a weapon. Like I have yeah. nothing to protect myself, and I need this phone. You, 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 you're, you, you, what's, what's next? There's nothing next. I think, you know what I would have done? This is so petty. You know what I would have done? I'd have been like, you know what? Look. Looks like Target's fine with thievery in this store. So you know what? Thievery. I'll steal. I'll steal. I'll steal you some stuff around you. You hungry? We'll get. I would have went down the aisle and just been like, "Here you go. You could just walk out. They don't really care." Or about I would have just customers. filmed them and been like, "So oh. you have my phone right, right now in your pocket, <laughs> and you're making me pay fifty dollars." Does that make sense to anyone else here? Comment down below if you oh, guys. Think I'm this already is live, sir. <laughs> so either give this to me now or let's ask the audience. Let's ask the audience. I just can't believe that like nobody, and I know there's probably rules, right? But like, I, if I was an employee target, like a target employee, and I saw that happen, yeah, and especially Jordan, look at him. But what Jordan, is, Jordan uh, went there. Uh, he like super, super dressed down to look like, you know, like this was this was his life. You know what I mean? Like he didn't like walk in wearing something nice. He, so, oh he, yeah, like, he, play he played the reverse. part. He was like he like messed his hair up, and he's like, <laughs> were you wearing the ruffle shirt? Uh, they always no, say that's too fancy. They always say dress down when you go buy a car because then like exactly. they right. think you have like I a lot of money. A tank top and like uh, like South Plantation gym shorts. All right. Like, just straight, like, uh, but so yeah, so he he got the gum and then he took the cash out and gave him the fifty bucks and and he did something very smart. If you're ever in a situation like this, when he <laughs> left, 
He did not immediately get in his car and drive away. He walked to a store next door and waited like 30 minutes you were in there good for him move. to leave. Yeah. So That's he didn't smart. follow him home. Very so. good. Heads up thinking, Jordy. So yeah. you think that guy goes back with this old pack of bubble gum in like $50 and he goes, I did it, boys. <laughs> like we, we did made it, it big today. How I mean, much rock do you think we can get for that? We're eating good today. But that, that was a lot of work for $50. That was an all day affair. $50. Five hours. That's $10 an hour. I want to go back to that Walmart and just keep an eye out. For, do you think it was him who oh, stole the phone? A target. Oh, target, sorry. Target's do you think it Walmart. was him who I'm, stole the phone or one of his minions? I think it was a minion. I think there's like a couple people in cahoots that yeah. are like running these schemes. And he's the dealer. We should go with just a fake phone and, and just, just like leave. film <gasps> it and be like, mm, and then be like, <laughs> busted. Where are you headed? You're done. You're done. <laughs> Boom. Citizens Just arrest. Buy a whole bunch of fake, broken, like looking ass phones. But do you get in trouble if you, you know, make an attempt to you like, shut this shit down? You expose them. You expose them. You film them. I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't yeah, do anything. But I'm sure the people they're hanging around don't really care. Don't give a fuck if they saw an exposed video of him. Uh, I oh, love. Do you ever. Dude, the cops had footage and a location. I don't think. Has, that has anybody in your video. town ever been like, your hometown been like busted for like robbery or something sketchy and they show a picture of them and you're like, ooh, that's them. There was definitely stuff that happened. There was a, uh, it just reminded me, there was a kid that went missing from our high school. Do you remember <gasps> oh, that? Oh, wow. Yo, I did, was he ever that found? No. crazy. You had a kid go missing from your high school. You've is never it once on the news? It was, about we, it. Uh, we had already graduated. He okay. was like uh, friends with like the Ruby group. And yeah, he went missing. He was downtown Fort Lauderdale. One night and just gone. Oh, wait. I do. I like gone. I remember a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you remember his name? Nobody has seen him since. Do you remember? I don't remember his name. I, I, I can find it though. Um, yeah, it was on the news and everything. Look for, still be on the lookout for Susan Smalley and Stacey Madison, who disappeared in 1988 in Carrollton, Texas. Been anyone, looking for them ever since. Anyone go missing in your since? hometown? I actually, I remember this girl. I would, <laughs> she was the new girl in fifth grade. It was fifth grade. So 10 years old. And she came in with like tattoos. Whoa. Like tattoos, her jeans were all ripped. Really she, would, she would draw like vulgar words on her jeans, but she was very nice. Like I became friends with her. She yeah. sat at my table. Everyone was scared of her because she just, she looked like a bully. She looked scary, but she was very sweet. Yeah. So I became friends with her. Her name was Susan. And <laughs> what just said Susan? Oh, wow. I said uh, oh. Susan Smalley and Stacey Madison. Um, Go on. And then. Literally in the middle of the school year, she disappeared. So everyone thought she just like switched schools. But in middle school, like eighth grade, there was a field trip and she was like under a bridge with homeless people. Mm. Oh, how old? Fifth grade. I mean, she middle, middle school. Or ran? A child. But wow. now she, I have her on Facebook. She's, she's, she's good fine. now. Yeah. She's like Do you ever like message now. her? Remember that one time? <laughs> no, I don't. But I have so many questions. <laughs> under the bridge? Was there, was there, were there like teachers on the field trip going, Hold on. I, stand back. No, Susan? no, no. Susan? I think it was Susan. like, here. <laughs> I think it was one of those field trips where you meet your pen pal in like a park. Did you ever do that? Where, I had, I had a pen pal write, in Mongolia. Oh, did you write to pen pals that went to different schools? Yes. And then you would meet up with them on field trips? When did we have that? We, I, we Mine was in uh, I think it was elementary, fifth, did you, elementary oh, school. Did you meet them behind like a, a, a plexiglass <laughs> with the phone? <laughs> <laughs> with the phones and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for writing me, kid. <laughs> yeah, I love your picture, especially oh. the one of the giraffe. Another another part of Jordan's story, which I thought was very annoying on the cop's end. Um, I think, you good? I think um, he said, oh, he told the cops that he, he had the footage because they were like, we can't do anything oh, yeah. without footage. So he goes, perfect, Target has the footage. They said they have the guy, they can see him. They can show you the footage from yeah. Target. So then the cops pull this one. They said, well, we need footage of the license plate. And Jordan's like, we have his, we have what he looks like. Like he goes, okay, can I, uh, can you come to target and ask them for the parking lot footage? And they said, no, it's live. So we target can't. target said, apparently all the cameras in the parking lot are live. That's so bullshit. they can't go back and look Good at Good luck. Uh but if there was, if somebody was murdered in the parking lot of Target, if I'm CEO of Target, let's, because I want to solve some cases, <laughs> prevent crimes from happening. I, I'm sorry, save some. The location was on, right? Yeah. Why do they need a license plate? We had the house. Yeah. When, when we were at the airport, we looked at the address. We put Google Maps view. We had the house. What's and the point of it being live then? He he was on. What's well, not live? They he, just didn't want to help him. He was on the phone with me. He was because uh, he was talking to me about it on the phone. He was like, "I'm going to go to the house." I was like, "Heath, do not go to the house." 
house just in case because he really wanted to get his phone back. Nobody, but it's, it's, nobody bullies Jordy. I know, but dude, I was because I, I was scared because I felt like you really you you were gonna go. Like whether I would have just not, and then depending on who opened the door, I would have decided uh, my purpose for being there. <laughs> yeah, when you're yeah, fucking dead. Uh, uh, DoorDash. Uh, <laughs> did you guys order? Oh, that's funny. Did you know we order yeah. and you. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just so, bought an empty pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> and order one <walk> out. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody uh, order a knuckle sandwich? Just give me the phone. <laughs> you show up with a Nerf gun. <laughs> like, or like the, the, ping, uh, the ping pong ball shooters. Like, <laughs> <laughs> then they'd be like, what the Whoa. fuck? Take the phone, man. This guy is crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just something weird. Like you show up like. <laughs> you, you know, got it. Because what were you saying? You got it. You're very nervous. Please. Yeah, we don't want I you to bust the seam. Yeah, you gotta act crazier than the crazy person, dude. You really and do. Like, <laughs> Get me back! <laughs> I told I told you when I I did that in Australia when I went on my walk. Yeah, you actually. Oh yeah, you gotta person. talk. To you you gotta act crazier. No, now I like I, I like you I have really, to. Yeah, I, it works. You gotta out crazy and, to crazy. And you're, and you're really good at like looking crazy. Or if they, they just they just gut you and you're acting crazy, you're like, never mind. You're like, it you're like this guy was acting like a crazy person. You're like, it was a bit. I thought they would just give me the phone, your officer, but please take me. I have my health insurance card, everything. Please take me. Take me right now. I'm not picking this. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our sponsor of this episode, Babbel. For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers. I know I took Spanish and I was really, really bad at it. So now thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there is now an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. And whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with a family, or you just have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. I actually did my first lesson for Italian the other day. Oh yeah. I it, it it's just fun. Like I like, I'm catching on, you know? Especially since we just went to Italy. I know. I was and like, it was know, hard it was hard to connect with everybody there. So we're now we're going to go back at some point and I want to be prepared. And you'll always be prepared because they are quick mm -hmm. and easy. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Exactly. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. And with Babbel, you could choose between 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent, like I'm doing right now. In addition to the lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee, baby. So start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. And everybody listening right now is going to get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash unfiltered. Again, that's babbel.com slash unfiltered for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, baby. Language for life. Thank you, Babbel. We love you. Ciao. While that was happening on that side of town... Yeah, what was going Matt on? Matt and I here? were living it up at the Emmys <laughs> while Jordan was going there. <laughs> we were at the Illuminati award show. Zane, Jordan just got robbed. I'm at the Emmys. Emmys. <laughs> Hold on, please. Leonardo DiCaprio just walked by. <laughs> no, I no. Sex. As soon as he sent me that text, I I ran for my life. That was a weird night. That was a weird night for oh, everybody. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was. Huh? That all happened the same day. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Does something bad. No, nothing. Oh, Mercury, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't win the Emmy. So, yeah, I think we all had a bad We night. didn't win. <laughs> we didn't win. Yeah, we didn't win podcast Is, is of the Emmy year. music? No, it's, no, a it's TV. Grammy. Grammy is that's music. Why, that's Emmy why I got is. so excited because it was TV. Mm. And but I thought- like awards for like sound and music in it. Got it. I thought Game of Thrones or House of Dragon uh, cast mm. were going to be there because it's- Were they not? Were, they were not. Not that I saw. Weird. Was that your first time at the Emmys? Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, I could too. not believe you guys were there. Mine too. Uh, oh yeah, give context on one, how did we get invited to the Emmys? So our friend Jeremy and Lord DIY, you guys know them. Jeremy they, Lewis. Yeah, Jeremy Lewis, they um, they got passes and they had extra tickets, so they invited um, us to go. And we had to get like, Last minute talks. We got like invited. Oh, Zane, Zane had to get fitted. Just uh, has to go buy a whole brand new. Because I did. I, I didn't have tailored. any. And I lost. You know the one I got for Vince's wedding. Yeah. It's. I. I can't find it. It's gone. How do you 
lose a three piece. I don't you know. Stay? Where'd you stay I, the night of Vincent's, Vincent's Zane, wedding? Zane, I, I, at my Zane, house. You, you got that suit dry cleaned. It's probably still at the dry cleaners if you didn't pick it up. Oh, shit. I didn't get it dry cleaned. Yes, you did. When? The next day. I never brought it to a dry cleaners. And you the, told me that it was at the dry cleaner. I did? You probably Wait, did. Let's see the, the footage. <laughs> I mean, if it's not at your house and you can't find it, you probably- You probably should find down where that suit is. Is it a tuxedo? Yeah, black it was tuxedo? expensive. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. it's nope. really nice. You always need to have one bl black tuxedo. It's probably at the dry cleaners, eh? That's funny. That's weird they don't call. They anyway. probably they did. Probably <laughs> did. <laughs> they probably did. I don't answer. They probably yeah, sent emails and everything. <laughs> so Zane's all dressed to the nines. I'm great black suit. I already kind of had a weird, stressful day, though, like leading up because um, you guys, I had to get my suit dry clean, picked up and everything. And then Mike suddenly a few days before was like, I have a surprise for you on Monday from like one to three, you need to be available. And I'm like, okay, but I'm going to the Emmys at 3.30. Like I have to be at Lauren and Jeremy's house. And he's like, okay, it won't, I don't think it will take long, but it's in Beverly Hills. And I'm like, what is it? Who is it? What are you surprising me with? And Mike is not giving me anything. Uh -huh. And usually I like surprises, but suddenly when I'm, so he drives me all the way down to Beverly Hills yeah. and I'm sitting there and we're in a car and I, I, so I'm trying to feel pumped because like I'm going to the Emmys today. This is really awesome. I have a great weekend ahead of me. This is going to be fun. And then I'm like, Mike, what is it? Can you just tell me, do, am I... Am I about, do I have to like talk to somebody or am I just gonna go look at something and be like, wow. I hate like, feeling like that. You know, I don't like surprises where anymore. Am I, do I have to be on? Is somebody gonna be filming me? Like, I don't know. And then suddenly I was like, time kept passing, kept passing and I'm like, this bit. And you're just waiting for something. Yeah, and I was like, this, this has to go on fast. And then finally he gets a call. He's like, okay, we're good. Okay, great. All right, um, all right, let's get out of the car. We walk up and it's the Allo uh, like headquarters office right. in Beverly Hills. Oh, and I'm I like, love that place. Why are we at the Allo house? And it's a Mike, box of free merch. <laughs> Mike gives, so then I'm like, I lower my expectations because I'm like, okay, so maybe it's like some weird thing Allo's doing like for some event or party and they just want my reaction for it. Like what's gonna be some cake like with my face on it. Like it could be that silly. Yeah. Gives me a blindfold. And then now I'm blindfolded oh for the next like Four fucking minutes. Like we have to, I got to go through two elevators, two different elevators, <laughs> walk through two different so. floors, and then I had to wait in the hallway with the blindfold on. So already I'm like, what the fuck? And then next thing I know, I walk in and immediately I know that I'm in like a studio, like a music studio or a set. Oh my gosh. My voice is suddenly right in front of my mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can just tell everything. It's how it sounds like kind <laughs> yeah, of in here. Right. And I'm like, I'm in a studio. Then I hear Jason's voice and I'm like, oh my, okay, Jason's here. And then as I'm like, I'm barely peeking down through my mask and I see wires in a chair and like a mic and I go, oh my God, I'm, I'm about to be like on Jason's podcast. And then Jason's like, Matt, I have someone here that you uh, are a big fan of and you're gonna meet and immediately I know. And you guys may not know who this guy is, but Pete Holmes. Pete Holmes is a comedian, uh -huh. actor, writer. I've been listening to his podcast for years and I've, always have wanted to meet him. Like really get to know him right. in an authentic way. Yeah. Take my blindfold off and immediately I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, your mind? buddy, like it was a, my, it was like one of the biggest like fan reactions where I'm like, Pete Holmes, oh my God. <laughs> Did you cry? Oh, like, yeah, pretty much like on the verge. Like I was shooken up. Like if it was fucking Ariana Grande, I'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> so nice to meet you. But when it's someone who I've been like, yeah. Yeah. I listen to, yeah. I know everything about their life. It was one of those moments, and I and I and it's Mike in front of me. We're on Jason's podcast, and my brain is just like freaking out. Goes into tunnel vision, and then it's just been like, then for like the next fifteen minutes, we're all talking and joking. And my, and I just my Can't brain goes think. into mush. Like I'm trying to think about all the questions and things that I've wanted to ask him, but it was still really great and funny and yeah. awesome. But after it, I was so, and it was so nice. We got pictures together and everything. It was really great. And then after it, my brain was just like, wah, 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 wah. Let's rethink everything. And even though Pete isn't a type of like anxious person to be like, you were weird. But I just felt like I was weird. Yeah, or I should yeah. have asked him this. I should have said this. Yeah. I should have done this. God, that was so awesome of a surprise. But my brain, you just the prepared, way it processed yeah. it, I was just like. That's okay. I don't know. It was so shook up. And then also it was because that being in a blindfold. And then I remember, then I'm like, look at the time and it goes, we're going to be 15 minutes late to Jeremy. And I'm like, all, now I'm late. For now the you're, Emmy. you're really freaking out. <laughs> so already then I was kind of like stressed. I was yeah. just 
my adrenaline was just like, it just was jolted. So we then go drive, all right, pull up. Zane's just getting in his suit. I'm like, all right, I'm good on time. Oh, I I, I, br I brought my clothes to Jeremy's and changed oh, it really? because we were running so late. Everybody was running so, because it took, remember it took like two hours to get up my shit. So we we're all just like getting we're shit that running, running late. running late, but it's good vibes. I'm kind of relaxed, but I'm still also just You're like, still thinking about so Pete. shook up and yeah. nervous. And I'm, you know, it was, just thinking about like the weekend ahead. And I'm like, I gotta get, still get more things done. Cause I was leaving on that Wednesday. I just had like, there was a lot on my mind, but I was like calm, but I was like, this is fun. We are going to the Emmys. This is fun. And we go, we get all dolled up. Uh huh. We get in the car, we show up, we enter the line with like some famous people. Yeah. We get in there. We have the best seats in the house. Well, besides Ooh. being on yeah. the floor and sitting at a table, right. The rest are like huge long theater row seats. We are up in like a private balcony suite. Oh, sick. With a private bar. bar. Whoa. It was really sick. How the hell did you get there? Oh, y'all getting turned up. Yeah, huh? that's cool. And in just our own private like little row looking down and watching the Emmys. And wow. I'm on cloud fucking nine. Yeah. Zane and I, and just knowing that I can have a beer anytime I fucking want right there. Great view. I'm chilling. Yeah. And Zane's having the time of his life. He's Snapchat and everything. Just yeah, like, I love Woo! it. I saw, as soon as I saw Mariah, as soon as I, because I, I was trying to send you the video, but I had no service in there. I was trying to send oh, you the clip yeah. of um, Mindy a, Kaling and BJ Novak. That was unreal. I know, I know. And, That's crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, we saw, yeah. Really quick, I what's, just, <clears> what's the significance of nine? Like cloud nine dressed to the nines. I was just thinking about that. Why it's nine? It's like to I don't the know. nth degree. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Anyway. I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> but yeah, we wish I wish you were there because it was so inviting. Everything was very inviting. And I just wish you were there because I know you, we could have just threw you right in the middle of the two of them. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it was like very like- It was open. cash? It, it was like pretty cash. Oh, like it cool. did Because you know a red car premiere, it's like paparazzi. Like you're not you're not stepping there. Like that's fucking great. Right. Yeah. This one was, it was one where everybody can take a picture in front of. And so different celebrities were taking pictures in front of where all the guests oh, were taking cool. pictures so too. I, Cause I feel like a lot of people who attend the Emmys are people who work in the industry. They yeah. had some role on some show, yeah. not like acting role, but like they were in production of set design or like, yeah. The teams run so deep at the Emmys, like when a show or someone would get nominated, you would hear such a huge roar from one section of the audience. Nice. So you knew like everybody there, yeah, yeah. there were no like fans there, if that makes yeah. any sense. It felt we're like- We're probably like the only fans there. It felt like the <laughs> end of the year, uh, I don't know, award show for like a class of, of high schoolers or something like that. I don't know, but fans here. And it's cool looking down at all the celebrities because you're like, Oh my God! There's so and so, yeah. and they're right there, and they're right there, and yeah. you're, we're enjoying it. Yeah, it was a really, it was a really good time, and everybody's having fun. Everyone's drinking. I keep looking at Matt because Matt, he he was so fucking like he was having the time of his life like before, and then all of a sudden I kept looking at him, and he just looks like down, and I'm just like Matt, what's wrong? Are you are so? You, are, are, you, I, are you okay? When I'm watching the show, I like I. Suddenly I just have this tummy ache. This is about 30 minutes into the show. And I go, ooh, that is a tummy ache. I, like, I, am, like, I am like, Gassy. ooh, that, that, is a, that is a belly Was ache. it like a bubbly, like a bubble gut type tummy ache? Pins and needles, prickly. Oh. So like, it was crampy, no? No, it felt like I had Sharp. swallowed like a sea urchin. And it oh was just, my it was, because oh. oh. normally if I have a tummy ache, oh, I can no. feel if it's like, acidic yeah. and like achy this one or have you ever like sometimes you haven't had like enough food in you and you can tell that like your stomach feels like raw like you have an ulcer almost mm. yeah it's like a it's, long time you, you feel eaten. like i used to get this thing like like up in the topper section like right here it would literally feel like a knife was just sticking in me right here and no matter what i did i couldn't like i couldn't function i would have to just like curl up and lay on my side for like two hours and like just, just so the wait for away. it to pass. I don't know what it was, but yeah, like, I know that like just, sharp it was, feeling. It though. was all over in the stomach area, prickly. And I go, -hoo -hoo. and I was like, okay, this is gonna pass. This is gonna pass. And like even had like a Bud Light there, and I'm like trying yeah. to just be like, all right, let's tough this out, man. You're gonna be good. And, and then I, I thought I, it was, I, th I thought it was food poisoning because you had you had uh, uh, fried chicken, you had, ch you had chicken tenders well, before. Because and then I look at you and I go, I go, I'm having, I go, I'm having a really bad stomach ache, and you go. When was the last time you ate? And I go, 
like around like one or two. And he goes, you probably should like get something to eat. And I go, good point. Maybe it's just because like, I've just had like two beers right. and I ate earlier in the day. I just haven't had anything in my stomach. And then, uh, then I remember like before I, cause, but I wasn't really that hungry. I go in to use the restroom. I use the restroom. It was fine. Had a little poop, but then my stomach had a was, little poop, <laughs> had a little poop stomach still bugging me. Didn't relieve it. Yeah. It was just, it was this, oh, it was just sharp and prickly. That's how I would describe it. And then I go, I need to go get some food. But that was like a whole separate line in concessions. Yeah, it was a long line. Because we had a private bar for drinks, food, and the food was like some, oh, it was either popcorn or like a Caprice sandwich <laughs> and a Caprice chicken sandwich. Like I'd go for fancy a Fancy Italian shit with arugula. And I was like, already my stomach's feeling bad. I was like, I don't want that. I need something simple. I need something simple. And as I'm waiting in line, I start sweating bullets. Oh my like, gosh. And I'm, and I'm around all these fancy people. Everyone's like having their, and I'm by like, you know, those like rope, <laughs> those rope <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. things. And I'm realizing like, I can't stand normally. I'm having like, keep my hand on those wow. like rope things. And I'm trying to keep cool. And I can even tell some people were looking at me going, <laughs> is this dude okay? Cause my phone too dizzy to look at. Oh. I, I know, Whoa. I know nobody. And I'm sitting there and I'm and I'm just sweating. And I know I had to be white as a ghost. And, I, and I'm just focused and it, the line went on for like 15, 20 minutes. And I get to the front and I go, popcorn please. And the guy goes, yeah, sure. You good, man? And I go, yeah, I just really need some popcorn. He goes, okay, <laughs> hands me the popcorn. I then go back to my seat. And then that's when like, I don't even want to sit next to you. Yeah, you were sitting far, I thought, like, I thought you I, felt. I thought you were gonna yak or something. That's why you're you're sitting yeah. back there. Because 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 I knew you were in a goofy mood and you were like were doing you, Snapchats and stuff. And I, at one point I go, I I I just like I couldn't be near you because you were in such a good mood. I was like I can't be on for. I was, you, I was were really you nervous, nervous at this point, or were you kind of just like confused? I was just like this has to pass. I'm at the fucking Emmys right now, <laughs> and I have a tummy ache. I go, this is really really weird, and I was worried. I was about. I had to puke. And I was like, God, I don't want to puke because the rest, the bathroom breaks happen every like fucking five yeah. minutes and they're long for the commercial breaks. Right. And I, and all those people walking with suits into the restroom, I don't want to be in the fucking stall going whoa, whoa, in front of like all these <laughs> all TV these celebrities. Execs. <laughs> but I was just, but I, I'm a big, like, I cannot puke. I will talk myself out of puking as much as I can. Um, and then I'm sitting there and I'm trying to eat the popcorn and dude, it's like, I don't, it, I, nothing was appetizing. And I'm like, and it keeps hurting. It's just like- It's getting worse. Yes. And it's still in my stomach area. And I'm like, oh my God, I may puke. But then I was like, I, and I kept trying to look down at the audience and try to focus, couldn't focus on anything. I was like, I need to lay down. So then I go oh behind our God. curtain and I sit down by the carpet with my back, just with my hands. That's where you went. I was wondering where you went. Yeah, yeah, that's where I was. I was behind this curtain. And then I'm like, just trying to breathe. I'm like trying to like take deep breaths. And then I'm like, I need to like lay down. And then I like lay down on my side and I'm like curled up in like the fetal position. And I'm like, oh. and then the security guard, he oh, comes probably out thought you were while Lizzo wrong. was he winning goes, an MA. Are you okay, sir? And I go, I'm so sorry. Just I'm not. Me. I go. I'm not. I'm not drunk. I'm not on drugs, and I'm. And I don't think I'm going to throw up. I just my stomach hurts really, really bad. I need to lay down. He goes. Do you need me to get, uh, like the medic team? Hold on. And I was like, no, no, it's no. It's crazy because no. remember we walked by like in that line. We walked by that medic that was like ready. Right. Yeah. And I, I was just like, no, 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 sir, no, sir. And then I'm there for another like. 15, 20 minutes, just keeling over, sweating bullets. And then suddenly I look up and I realize all of those other people who were in that huge other top arena could all see, see me oh, in no. the balcony. Because there, there, the, there, there was times where my flash would go off and they would all turn their heads. Oh, so they, we we're very God. visible like, to I'm everybody. talking about like b well over a couple hundred people. Yeah. Shut could up. instantly probably look at like, who's sitting in those fancy seats exactly. and, and see you're on this the floor? man in a tub, in a suit, just <laughs> oh, like oh my sweating. God. And then that's where like, then I started getting really, really sad. Cause I go, oh my gosh, I have to leave the Emmys. This is like, 
this is getting so bad where then I, cause then Jeremy was talking to all of his friends who were by the bar. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't even small talk with anybody. Yeah. Like that, I, I can't, if this night is gonna continue and I have to keep talking to people and interacting. How long have you been there at this point? Like, is it, is it wrapping like four, up? No, it, it, we, I bet we are halfway through the Emmys. Yeah, we were it probably was, there for like maybe two hours. Julia Garner had just gotten a reward. Gina Davis was getting the lifetime. I remember being on the floor and being like, <laughs> Gina Davis is yeah. on stage and I can't even see her right now. And then I was just like, this sucks. And then, in that moment, I remember trying to text Patricia and Patricia wasn't answering the cell phone signal suck there. And I yeah. was just trying to be like, am I crazy for leaving the Emmys over a tummy ache? And then suddenly I go, no, this hasn't gotten better and this will continue to yeah. get worse. You need to go. But you didn't have the keys to go because no. I left my keys at Jordan and Lawrence or J I left my keys at Jeremy and Lauren's house so we can get home. Zane didn't have his keys. I didn't then get an Uber. And then I realized if I stay for the end, it's gonna be a nightmare yeah. trying to leave oh, this place. Oh exactly. my gosh, yeah. You I, wouldn't and I remember we had that conversation. Yeah, I was like, you gotta go right now. I go, I'm, I gotta go now. And I remember walking down the steps and then it, I go, where do you leave? They go, the, you wanna leave the Emmys right now? <laughs> oh, and I go, shit. where's the closest place I can get an Uber? And they were like, I mean, right over there, but you really wanna go right now? <laughs> like, it looked like I, I had a death like in the family. <laughs> like I was just heartbroken. So, <sighs> And then I, so I get the, and then I'm calling Mike and I go, I need to come to your house right now. And he goes, why, what's up? And I go, I can't get into my house. My, I am having terrible stomach pains. I just need to go somewhere and lay down. And Mike's like, yeah, sure. I get to Mike's lay down and I'm finally just like relieved. But I'm ha now the pain when I was in the Uber, even the Uber driver's like, sir, are you okay? <laughs> And I'm like, I'm fine. My are you like making noises in the backseat? Like, <sighs> no, it, dude, it's. Are you just kind of just I'm like talking about, like, like almost like on the verge of like giving birth, or you're like on the verge of death, where you're like, like not like, oh, oh you're like. <sighs> Matt, I'm surprised that you didn't go straight to the ER. Because now here's the thing, because I still thought it was a stomachache. I still you're thought, not like aware of like the emergency the at pain, hand. The pain, because I I used to read so much about appendicitis. It was my yeah. biggest fear. A lot of it starts in the belly button area, and it's sharp. sharp. You feel like someone's stabbing you. Yeah. It still felt like a really gnarly stomach ache, like almost like I had an ulcer or something. Mm -hmm. Or I, I just felt like I was on the verge of throwing up, and I needed to lay down and not talk to anybody. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. Because... So then I go to Mike's, we're Googling everything about, and then before, right when I get to Mike's, all of a sudden the pain has now moved and it's in my lower right side. Oh, is that like man. a, like a, that's the sign? That is the sign, lower right side, that is the quadrant of yeah. where your appendix is and where you feel the pain. Cause I've had trap gas up here on left sides, right sides, and I get trap gas all the time. But this was like weird. This one felt like someone had like opened you up and put like a like a stone in you, like a mm. like a like a rock, and then so you and it was just like heavy and dull. Oh wow! It was heavy, dull in there. Then it, you're to, in your suit the whole time. What? Yes. That's funny. Oh my god! Yes, oh, he went and, in style, baby. Oh, yeah. and I remember when I was sweating at the Emmys. You know when you, you ever like you're sweating in a suit. It like uh -huh. it sticks to you, you almost like can the, like smell like you're like uh, the material that, in the like sweat. that sw yes yeah like someone who's been like sweaty in a suit you can like smell it not like their body odor but just sweat yeah, in yeah, a suit yeah I remember feeling like that I'm like I need to get the fuck out of did here. they cut it off of you as soon as you got to the ER <laughs> like well so no 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 so this is what happened <laughs> you're fucking two thousand you're like no <laughs> I know so no because I go this is Dolce and Gabbana just took it off and so. <laughs> I go to Mike's house, and I'm sorry if this story is long, but this is like pretty interesting. No, this is crazy. And then I go to Mike's house. I lay down on the bed, and I go, I think I have appendicitis. He goes, I think you're being over dramatic. And I go, dude, take my fucking temperature I right left now. the Emmys, it's Ta me. I go, take, and I remember texting the group chat, like Patricia's friends, and I go, I had to leave. They're like, Matt, how's the Emmys? We haven't seen anything. I go, I had to leave. I, my, I, my stomach is really bad, or I text, has anyone ever had appendicitis? And they go, why? What's happening? You go, I think I have it right now and I had to leave the Emmys. And they go, oh my gosh, Matt, over a tummy ache? And I'm like, you don't understand. And Mike's looking at me, he goes, 
I don't think you have it. I just think you probably have trapped gas. And we're Googling, should we go? And then we find out on Google that if you think you're having appendicitis, you really should wait at least 12 hours. Oh. Because if it's trapped gas, you even if you go to the ER and you're like, my stomach started hurting, when? A couple hours ago, they go, let's wait a little bit right. because oh, we can't man. assume yeah. you have appendicitis. And I was like, well, thank goodness I looked that up because I didn't want to go there and pay for a whole fucking hospital visit yeah. Yeah. to be turned around. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this episode, BetterHelp. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. But when you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. The therapists can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. If you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option because it's easy, convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. And you can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. It's also so much easier to do a video chat, text them. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, you could phone call it, instead of going to an office, sitting in a waiting room, you got to drive. Uh, it's just so much easier to do it from the comfort of your own home. And it feels great to finally, you know, be able to open up and, you know, get those feelings off your chest and talk to somebody about what you're going through. Exactly. And I feel like it's always better talking to somebody that's completely unbiased instead of like a friend or a family member. Because, because you kinda... most of the time when you want to come to me, I don't want to hear it, baby. Exactly. But, but better help therapists, they want to hear it and they want to help you. Exactly. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Zane and Heath today to get 10% off your first month. That's better. H-E-L-P.com slash Zane and Heath. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's episode. We love you. So I wait on my side. Then I wait for Patricia because she was watching the Emmys with friends. And I was like, don't worry about me. Maybe it is. She comes, pick me up. I took me temperature. It's 100. Took me temperature. I took me temperature. <laughs> I took, I took, I took me temperature. Me it's 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. The shit's moving then. So no. So, I'll, uh, so then I'm like, I'm sick. This is weird. Isn't it weird that I have a tummy yeah. ache and a, t and a fever? Patricia picks me up. She takes me home. And already I'm like, God, I got to record good influences in the morning. And then I have to record with Carly and Aaron. And I'm like, I have a big fuck. I have like huge days ahead of me. Like this can't be appendicitis. This can't be. But I stay sleeping in the same position. I go, if I wake up and this is still here, something, something is wrong. wrong. Yeah. I wake up. Sure enough, it's still there. It's still in that right position. I go, fuck. But I can still like talk and walk and like kind of normal. But it just hurts to laugh or cough. But it's there. So I go and record good influences. We're sitting and I'm making jokes and stuff. And every time I laugh, I'm like, oh, but it's still not like sharp. Is it still like that prickly sensation? It's just like Un very uncomfortable. Just heavy. uncomfortable. You're just like, God, like, <laughs> like, it just feels like someone is poking a bruise almost. Where you're like, that doesn't feel good. Then I go and record with Carly and Aaron to do Emmy's reviews. And the whole time I'm telling the whole story about I left because of a tummy ache, I may have appendicitis right now. And then after we record it, Aaron goes, we should go to the hospital. And I'm like, you think, you, do you really think so? She goes, yes, you need to get this ruled out because you're traveling tomorrow and you have a big weekend. Just you need to at least know this yeah. is an appendicitis. Yeah. Then it getting worse because some people will have appendicitis. Who cares and if you wait. show up and you're a little embarrassed that it was nothing? Like you just you just yeah. find out, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't. Better say people can right. have it. Like Aaron and dad had it for like two days before it like oh, got wow. worse. And it could, the thing is, it could burst at any time. Yeah, that's, that's what I was worried about. Yeah, we go, we go to urgent care. They turn me away. They go, we don't have the stuff to tech appendicitis. Then takes me to the Kaiser Hospital in Hollywood. Two hour wait. Oh my Which God. sucked, Damn. but honestly, thank God for TikTok because that makes two hours go by like <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. Thank goodness. It kind of went by really, really fast. They had to leave. Mike comes. He stays with me. Mike is still like, Mike thinks hospitals are just like a scam. Mm -hmm. They're just going to charge you for everything. And it's really, like, yeah, it's like. He's very skeptical. <laughs> he thinks I'm just like stressed. Time. He thinks I'm stressed and that this is overreaction. They finally uh, take me, admit me in, but then I have to wait two more hours and I'm in a hospital bed in the hallway. And they, they have like one person come in every 45 minutes to say a, a couple sentences yes. and they're like, this is it. And then they walk Actually, out. Actually, that's good though. It took a long time because they could have turned you down if it was earlier. Now hours have gone by. Now you can I'm say in. you're up to like eight hours. Exactly. I just wanted yeah. a room. I just can't believe I was yeah. in the hallway. Uh, like uh, when you feel in the hallway and you're by, right by the reception and stuff. Everyone's uh, just, oh. <laughs> and then people are just coming in and you're just like, oh gosh, yeah. look at this person. Put I'm just there knitting away. People are like, oh, what are you knitting? <laughs> I would have showed. Did you didn't show up in the suit? You changed, right? 
I changed. I would have showed up in the Mike's suit, clothes. so you were priority. Like, yeah. so yeah. like this what's your story? Going on. I just came from the Emmys. I was nominated. I was nominated. Uh, I need to get back because I, they're about I'm, to I'm, give me my award. Yeah. I was I was adding that detail to every nurse or doctor who would come by to go, so what happened? I was like, I was at the Emmys. Oh, just to make myself seem uh, more legit. Like I would do the I, same thing just oh so I get taken care of quicker. Because a lot of people at the hospital, all respect to people who need medical need and everything. Some of you at the hospital look crazy. <laughs> oh no, like, they probably are. They look insane and you want, and, but the thing is, but they I think so you're crazy. Yeah, Yo, this guy thinks he was at the Emmys. We got another <laughs> crazy one. <laughs> I was trying to like make, I wanted to make myself seem legit, but what was great though, and God, shout out to this guy. Not sure if he was a doctor or a nurse or a radiologist. I'm pretty sure he's a radiologist. He walks by in his scrubs and everything, looks at me and Mike and goes, love the show guys, by the way. Sick. Big fan. Perfect. And nice. then the receptionists are all like, <laughs> Who are these boys? So already I'm getting a little getting a little cred. And then my, the doctor who's like working at me goes, oh, famous boy, huh? And I'm like, oh, please, <laughs> whatever. We already get that. So already I'm in a good mood, but I'm still really worried. Go to the radiologist, that guy. He's like, what's up? It's the guy who's the best Christmas village in town. Like, I was like, hey, oh what's up? Thank you, man. He's like, all right, let's get you checked out. They do the big MRI, like not MRI scan, CT scan. The big belt. Yeah. Thing. Detect it. I'm like, all oh, good to go. Then suddenly I'm sitting there and I go, maybe I'm just overreacting. Maybe this is just gas. This is silly, Matt. Let's focus on how great this weekend is going to be. It's nothing. It is nothing. And then I even start getting a little hungry. And I go, that's weird because if you have that's appendicitis, a you have no appetite. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting pretty hungry about mm, now. Yeah. So I start munching on some chips. I'm knitting. <laughs> and then the doctor comes and he goes, you're Matt? And I'm like, yeah. And I go, or he goes, so we did look at the scans and we did do all your blood work and everything. And it does look like you're having a case of appendicitis right now. So we're going to need to operate tonight. And Mike just looks at me and he's like, <laughs> and I look at Mike and I look at him and I go, oh my God. Your biggest fear. At least you don't have that fear anymore. It's a, you already got it. It is out, it's out of now. the way. It's out of the I, way. I thought you were fucking, it, it's just crazy. Dude, for years you've been talking about this. I remember... Remember us at the mall when we were talking about appendicitis yeah. and you're like, that's my biggest fear. That's like, I would. He's brought it up on the podcast. It's Multiple insane. Times. Yeah. It's, it's insane. insane that it, it fucking happened. And, and you know what though? So even Patricia the, and Mike, a lot of people didn't want to believe me. They thought I was, <laughs> they thought I just had gas. Even like the group chat, someone in the morning was like, Hey Matt, how's uh uh how's the stomach going or whatever? Oh, never mind. I saw the snap and I look at Patricia and I go, "What snap are we talking about?" Because I'm still in pain. Yeah. And Patricia's driving me to good influences. She goes, <laughs> "Oh, I just posted a Snapchat saying that you were being overdramatic and that's probably just gas." And I go, "Oh." <laughs> I was like, I don't look too good now. I go, I am still in pain. I, and I said this before, like in the morning, I go, I'm still in pain. I don't find that funny because <laughs> now everyone thinks I'm being overdramatic. And I left the fucking Emmys last night yeah, over a stomach ache. I wouldn't have left. No, you know me. You yeah, no, left. you would have stuck through it. I can yeah. party through a hangover. I can yeah. party through a headache. Like your body, your body knows. Your brain knows like something. Yeah. You're so you're always down. You're always down to do shit. And that's why I knew there was a big issue. I I thought like food poisoning is still pretty bad. So I thought you had that food poisoning. It could have been that bad. too, yeah. Uh, and I wanted that to be it. Yeah. I really you, did. You it's deep like, down knew something was clearly wrong. Yeah. So it we, looked it looked like it was And so wrong. then they go, We're gonna be operating tonight. And then the whole like surgery team like comes. They're like the residents. They're like the Grey's Anatomy <laughs> people. Oh, they lay down God. what's going to happen tonight. And they go, did you just eat a chip? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like <laughs> yes. And they go, okay, well, instead of it being a midnight operation, it's most likely going to be a 3 a.m. No! operation. Oh, no. She goes, also, this is like, they're like, this is Jeff. He is our uh, medical student in training. I go, okay. I'm like, Jeff, do you have any questions? <laughs> He's like, no, no. And I go, well, this is an educational experience. I want everybody to be learning. <laughs> they are trying to crack jokes and they're like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> um, but then it was weird being confirmed that I do have appendicitis and then being like, we, you have to wait six or seven more hours. Before now, what, we what exactly is appendicitis? So do you know where your appendix is? Yeah. Your large, you know, small intestine. Right. Yeah. And then it goes into the large intestine. That's the big one. Yep. And that goes down into the colon. The large intestine right here has a little appendage, right? Almost like a little like worm tube thing 
that still to this day they think it's a it's a big mystery organ. We don't know what it's for, but it is not essential. We do think it was back from when the caveman days where we used to eat like a lot of like really like raw like mm-hmm. stems and bone and start, cartilage. Yeah. It was this area for us to digest and filter like really hard intense stuff. But over the years, humans we've evolved and it's become pointless. But it's an area that does in a way like collect bile and, and like toxins, can become right? irritated. Like, and since your stool goes past it, if uh, sometimes like pieces of like your poop can block it, which cause it to release and it creates tension, which then causes it to become inflamed. So appendicitis it. is it's blocked and inflamed. Yes, it could be blocked or it's somehow has been irritated already. And if it's blocked for a long enough time, it'll bust. Yes. And then if it busts, that means that you then have all of your bacteria, basically yeah. poop and all this stuff exploding into your abdomen. It'll which poison you from the inside. Yeah. Septic sh- or That's insane septic how shock. that, that yeah. can happen. Um, and you can die. So then you're like, okay, so now I'm on like a fucking ticking time bomb. Though if you, even if it does explode, and for some people it does, if you get it safely done, you're gonna be fine. But then instantly, you, I felt like I was like somebody in the movie Alien, and I'm like, get it out of there. <laughs> <laughs> get it out of me. I just possessed. But like, as long as you're you're in the hospital, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people, that shit happens, and, bursts, and they're not they'll even- they'll take you in earlier, yeah. yeah. I know. Forget about the chip. It, oh, it's just that little, little it's thing. It's that thing little thing. Well, is this, is this preventable or just happens to people? Like, um, It's not really like, preventable. I've always have joked, I go, I just make sense that we take out our wisdom teeth preventatively to reduce crowding in our mouths when we have this appendage that in our body you. that one in every 20 people, it can burst and can kill you. Like if I, that's you know, so what I'm saying. I never, I, I'm always worried. I've always been worried about it happening before a really big day, like before a wedding day or some big moment right. in your life suddenly yeah. you have to have it removed. I thought it was I thought it was like rare. I thought it was re- like rarer than that, like one in yeah, 20 me people. Too. I've, oh, the thing is when people always have mentioned, oh, I got appendicitis, I go, tell me more. Tell me what happened. Because I have- It's almost like your your subconscious knew you had man, to be You manifested it. getting in a, it. I, I feel like yeah. it did. In, in a past life, it, it felt like yeah. that kind of connection. Anytime ever went, like I remember the movie Madeline, little Madeline, her appendix burst. And I was like, that's gonna happen to me. That's like, crazy. It was, and does it have anything to do with what like goes into your body at all, or it just could happen? It's eh, just random. Not it, it pretty random. Um, die, it, it could, if it was something I ate, it had to have been something I ate like recently. He, Sometimes he do like, be eating a lot he, of fast food. That, that's why. I, that's why I asked. Not <laughs> that much compared to people who like do not get it. Like, try, I eat pretty well. I'm saying this happens. It's usually something I ate that had like a bacteria and illness that irritated it, and that's what happened. Got it. Because like th- this happens with like kids too. Mm-hmm. Oh really? People, yes. Oh shit. It like even really healthy people will get appendicitis. Like it's very random, but I've always felt this connection to it. So, anyways, three a.m. and then it was just then I couldn't eat and I couldn't drink anything, which sucked. For was, how long? Ah, uh, like I then hadn't ate anything in besides the chip. The chip was the only thing I ate that day. One, could, one chip? I cut two or three chips. Damn. Oh, man. I'd hate that. I was just like, oh, actually, I did have a little bite of some chicken. At <laughs> <Oop. Aaron's house. laughs> Fried chicken. No, so, it was like some air some wash. Beef, Are you always going to, now, every time you go to Raising Cane's, that's where you're going to think about it. I, dude, that, fuck, that fucked with like the way I looked at it. Someone was posting Raising Cane's on their Instagram story today, and I was like, you felt mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. It bummed me out because I loved it. You should it. talk about it. Raising Cane's gave you appendicitis. Ra- was, raising raising awareness. Fucking amazing. <laughs> It's really uh, good. But I don't know. Time. I don't think it would have been because it, it had to have been something from the day before because it takes a while to digest things. It has to go through your your stomach, your small intestine, and then your large intestine it, for it to become irritated. So it may not have been the Raising Cane's. I, I like don't understand how that shit goes around, like how it goes through your intestines, like all that food Dude, and all that shit. The body's incredible. It's insane. Hydrochloric acid. So- Mitochondria. Then, it was, then I was like getting kind of like nervous. I'm like, God, I'm going under. I'm having a surgery. I was waiting for Patricia to show up. And I'm like, because at one point, the guy was like, we may take you down in like 30 minutes. And I'm like, I need to see my girlfriend before I go. And it needs to be the last person I see because it is spooky. How long is the surgery? The procedure itself, the time they cut your body yeah. open, 20, 30 minutes. Okay. Oh, Whoa, I thought it was so hours. fast. 
That's like wisdom teeth. Yeah, no, they know exactly where it is. And this Working one out is longer it, than that. So an, ap, an appendectomy, I'm pretty sure, is where they just cut one area. This is how they've always done it, like since like the fucking 50s. They open that, take it out, so yeah. But now they have a thing called a laparoscopic surgery, which they do for a lot of different um, internal organ surgeries, but they basically make three holes, one in your belly button, two down in your lower abdomen. They basically insert a camera in one to like see everything. And then the other two go in. Like a vacuum? And, uh, and cauterize it and basically cut it. Oh my and, gosh. And suture it up and then That's take it all out. That's pretty cool. Can you get that footage? Did they give you the appendix? You know what? I wanted to crack that joke, but then as I was Googling people about it, they, they'll be like, you're a crazy person. Just don't ask for it. And it's also a t like, I would, I, it's crazy. I, it's crazy. I would like immediately Cause it's more work. It. It's more work for them to like, okay, now we have to go clean this thing for this guy, dry it out. But are they recording it or is it just a camera and they have like a live? Oh, I, was, they, I think he's on an appendix. So we're talking about the footage. No. no, you know what? I could have asked for the footage, but the thing is, I don't want to see my insides. Cause that already just grosses me yeah. out knowing it's just That's real. That's mine. Yeah. No. Uh -uh. I kinda, I, but then, then it was just so strange going under, <clears throat> and, then under you, and then you wake up and it's like done. And then yeah. you're like, it, isn't it fun to like fight the falling asleep though? Like oh, when you it's know so it, fun. I love that. I was, I was uh, like, I, you, when, when I went you in, get through, yeah. you know what I mean? When I went in, I was like, hey team, how are we doing? Like I, like when I went, in, <laughs> you're up, when I went into the emergency room, they're like, have me like rolled down <laughs> and like every, like it's a team of like 15 people in there. They're so all fun. Ready. It makes you I'm feel like, like you I go, hey jokes. team. And then one girl, I was like, did you see her? She, her lanyard was Harry Potter and the cursed child. I go, did you see Harry Potter cursed child? And I go, you see in San Francisco or London. Now, did you go to the abridged one? She goes, I think just relax. Like, <laughs> like I was trying to be goofy. And then I was like, then I realized I was so, I was so nervous where I was like, I'm not going to try to fight this. I just want to relax and go into it because, um, but then you wake up and then immediately you feel like just someone your stolen organ. You know, wait. You felt it. You felt something just gone. Oh, well, uh, oh! Did you lose weight? You should have weighed yourself before and after. Oh, I bet. I, 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 like I bet it probably weighs like. A pound. I just I remember waking up and just feeling like I'd just been stapled shut and they'd taken something out of me. Oh like my just, gosh. and then being like, and then I remember just apologizing when I woke up. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They're like, what? You just had surgery, and I go, uh, you feel like you just like passed out on somebody. Yeah, <laughs> you feel so um, embarrassed. Like, yeah. It's, cr it's weird. Yeah, when people are looking at you sleeping <laughs> and you're like, so did every, I was like, did everything go okay? Am I fine? And I'm I fine. They go, it went so smoothly. Everything is fine. What's weird also, have you- You got robbed. I also <laughs> felt like it was weird being an adult going officially under surgery because you are treated as an adult compared to when you were a kid. It's like, oh, oh yeah. you're just gonna go on a long nap and everything's gonna be fine. Don't you worry about it. Before I went in, like the anesthesiologist comes up and goes, hi, I'm Nancy, I'm your anesthesiologist. I'm just gonna run uh, through what you've agreed to today. That oh, we're gonna be doing weird. this. And, oh. if this doesn't, and, like, and if this doesn't happen, we then have to go and proceed with this procedure. So if you sign here, I'm- You're doing like goes, a contract. You're, you're yes. like signing. That's she so goes, crazy. do we do any drugs? Do you vape or anything like that? She goes, we need to know all of this because I need to know this under anesthesia, blah, 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 blah. Like, and I'm like, uh, 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 yeah, I like vape like uh, occasionally. Or she goes, okay, that's good to know. Good to know. Um, cigarette, are, have you? And then I remember, right, she was pushing me into the ER. She goes, and recreational drugs. And I go, what about them? She goes, are you on any right now? And I go, no. <laughs> she goes, okay, good. I have to ask everybody that, but like, she just like, was she like, like, oh, like, she's like, like looking at me dead in the eye. And I go, no, are like, you sure? Because the rumor got around that you thought you were at the Emmys. <laughs> yeah, it probably, she probably, people probably thought you were like on cocaine or oh, something. Oh, probably. Yeah, you were sweating. Because people, are prob people probably do crazy stuff over there. So then I was just like, and then I was like, yeah, I've been honest, but it was, it was very like, you could die, but we want to make sure. Not like really, you're not going to die if you get your appendix removed. But it, I just had never felt like that. So like, yeah, this, I know this, what you're you so, mean. You're agreeing to this. It's like, it's like skydiving, risks. what you signed for skydiving. Yeah. That first line is just like, you can probably die on this. Just yeah. letting you know, and you sign it. Oh, I just didn't want one slip up or like, oop, we cut an artery, now you can't walk anymore. <laughs> like, uh. my, my, my fucking my nightmare would be waking up, you're like, oh, okay, is it done? And they're all still, <laughs> with you open oh, mouth. Yeah. People, people wake up all the time while still in that's mid surgery. That's insane.
Oh. But you, they just don't feel anything because they're still under. Well, so, well, some people wake up and they don't feel anything, but then other people feel it, but they can't physically move and say anything. So you're sitting there, your body's like numb and paralyzed, but you're going through it and you're feeling oh, everything. Mm -mm. Oh. Oh. So what is your recovery time? A couple weeks or what? They say I will not be like fully normal, like not being able to like lift things or like have the same type of energy and strength. Um, for now one to two weeks, but now yeah. it's Saturday. Surgery happened Tuesday going into Wednesday. I feel better every day. I yeah. can now walk, That's but good. I still feel like I'm very bound here. Like I can't fully like stretch my body. It hurts to laugh. It hurts to cough. Hurts to cry. It's like getting a C-section. <laughs> yeah, you it's can't, just, like, it's hold really, the baby. Can't. and I don't, I don't, I mean, this is great. This was perfect timing to do this, but like I, today I didn't want to go to like, Jack Cook's house and stuff. I yeah. don't want to be, I need in to be just as much rest as possible, in my yeah. bedroom, just drinking water, relaxing. I can now kind of eat what I can. I can now have like a soda, which is good. Matt said he's been watching serious movies only so he can't, cause he can't laugh. Well, I can't much. laugh. Oh God. Yeah. Ugh. It has to be very serious. Just a serious drama. Me and Danielle last night were like, you don't want to watch a movie with us? He's like, I, I cannot be here. Yeah, I no, gotta go no up to my room. No commentary, nobody talk. <laughs> <laughs> me and Daniel were cracking jokes the whole time. It's we're like, why don't you sit down? It's already kind of like exhausting to like talk a lot too. It's, yeah. But it, I'm saying that though, like not being like, oh, I just, me. but it really is because when you talk, it expands your yeah, exactly. Brain. So it's not healing right. Like you're constantly expanding it. Oh, but the worst night was like the night after the surgery. And the thing is you can't poop. They, they say oh. you won't oh, really? pass a stool for probably one to two, three days. You're like, huh? But then I was so hungry. So I'm eating a lot. I was eating a lot of like mashed potatoes, rice, uh, fr like fruit smoothies and stuff and yogurt. And I'm eating all of that. But then I like, but then I had like a little bit of energy where I was like, you know what? I'm going to eat some more. Then towards Ooh. 2 a.m. I I felt I feel just things moving and I just feel like I'm digesting a football. <laughs> <laughs> I go Thinking over to it. the side of my bed and I'm shaking. Patricia, it's just laid down to go to bed. And I go, help me, come here, come here, help me, help me, help me. And she goes, Are you talking to me? And I go, help me, help me, help me, come here, come here. Because I couldn't use any energy. I'm white as a ghost. I am in this like <laughs> this like kneeling position. Like I am up like praying to God at the edge of my bed. And and Patricia touches me. She goes, oh my gosh, you're wet. Like I was so wet in sweat and I was cold as a ghost. And it was because I was coming down off the anesthesia and I was just making my first like movement probably uh -huh. out of my stomach oh. into my small intestines. And I was just like, oh, oh. And for the next like, hour I just had to breathe deeply and Patricia had to like have me in between her legs like I was about to give birth and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like tripping out because I realized this these are your organs like yeah. I felt like everything was gonna pop knowing that you're yeah. stapled <clears throat> shut in one area oh I, and pi I picture it it's like scary you know, that the, you wouldn't you know, know the balloon animals yeah I picture that like your large intestine and any little like release of this exactly <laughs> that's that's frightening do you have a band-aid what happened? Oh, no. I just cut my finger. There's a You're shark. just just hurting yourself. Everyone's just hurting a, themselves. Damn, I can't believe. Are I you did. okay? I'm good. I did there, that yesterday. There's a sharp staple that just sticks out. Oh. Internal bleeding is very scary because you don't know. Yeah. Oh, thumbnail. <gasps> very good. Good job, guys. His staple cut him off. So yeah, I'm recovering now. Uh, just got to take it easy. Probably like one more week and I'll be fine. But. I'm just, yeah, I'm cut open in like three different places. Do you have bandages That's on it? That's it, you can move on with your life. You, you don't, that was your biggest I know. fear. Done. Doesn't it yeah. feel amazing though? Like now you don't have to worry. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think about that a What's lot. What's the new fear? Mm. Let's not talk about yeah, fear. Like, so yeah, that don't, it let's happen. not manifest yeah, right. this one. <laughs> no, I don't I know. just hope that your fear is the only thing that happens out of all of us. No, I hope so. No, nothing else. There's nothing, nothing else. else. We don't need anything else. What, what's but your I'm, fear? I don't have any. Good. Very good. What's your fear? Nothing? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, weird. Okay. Just the dark. And I, I can't avoid that. Nobody knows my fear. Yeah, weird. I don't have one. Can Airplanes. It's cancer. My fear? Or was that just one time? Oh, that was one time. That was because I kept getting ads. You're just worried. You're, Zane you're, had you're, like you're, a hypochondriac like face. Yeah, that was, that was a, yeah, that was a moment <laughs> that 
for the testicular cancer. That was like a moment I had. <laughs> and I think, I think honestly, it was Zach Piona that like made me like really, like when I saw him, yeah. I was like, look, an like anybody can have it. You it's know, one of our friends from high school get them on. had testicular cancer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember Tyler. I, now, but, now I feel pretty he, good. And I also love that. Like I've hit this like big rock bot or like just, yeah. like, it's just nice. Also now having like two weeks of not drinking, not, it's like you're a full body cleanse. cleanse. Yeah, and you're then you're resetting. at your bottom and then I just get to restart and rebuild, mm -hmm. which I'm right. really looking forward That's to. That's good. That's really exciting. But guys, if you are listening, I, I'm not trying to talk anybody into the paranoia that you have appendicitis if something bad is wrong with your stomach. If you do think something is wrong, pay attention to it, but also wait like 12 or 13, 14 hours. If that pain hasn't moved, then go get it looked at. Just don't immediately rush to the it's hospital. It's good. That's my advice to anybody, and I'm glad I waited. Yeah, and it's good that you told them, like, step by, like, literally phase by phase of how you were feeling and what you felt like and what you were doing, and, like, maybe that will help yes. anybody listening if they ever experience that. Just know it starts in the stomach and then moves to the right side most of the time. And you have a fever. If you're not having a fever, then it sounds like you just have a bad stomach ache. Mm. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this episode, Noom. When we decide to lose weight, it's usually not just about the number on the scale. Whatever your reason is for wanting to make a change, Noom Weight is ready to help. Noom Weight's psychology-based approach empowers you with the knowledge and support to build lasting results. To date, Noom Weight has helped more than 3.6 million people lose weight, which is incredible. And remember that every journey is different, so your daily lessons are personalized to you and your own individual goals. And the program on there is based on scientific principles like cognitive behavioral therapy to help you understand your relationship with food. And no matter what your health goals are, the flexible, non-restrictive program focuses on progress instead of perfection. It's okay to uh, have a Hershey's or whatever your guilty pleasure may be, but it's to be able to build a better habit and have a better relationship with food and be in control uh, is what they're really helping you with. Exactly. It's all about balance. And what I love about Noom is that you get to choose your level of support on there. So you could get from a five minute daily check-in or you can get a whole personal coaching session. And on average, active Noom users lose 15 pounds in 16 weeks, and 95% of customers say Noom weight is a good long-term solution. Exactly. You know we're on our health ground right now, so something like Noom would be perfect for you guys if you guys want to start on a journey just like we did. And remember to stay focused on what's important to you with Noom weight's psychology-based approach. So sign up for your trial today at Noom.com slash unfiltered. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash unfiltered to sign up for your trial today, baby. Thank you, Noom. We love you. I can't believe it. So while Matt was knitting in the hospital and getting his appendix taken out. I couldn't even watch your stories. I couldn't look at anybody's thing about the Emmys. Like, you, you I, did, like the thing is that you actually didn't miss anything because you left, right? The show ended and then we just... Went to Poppy. We we went to, yeah, we went to a nightclub, but like nobody, it's not like everybody was there. You it missed out. Like, it was like, the I heard it was the craziest night ever. Yeah, the best night ever. Like all the celebrities went out with them afterwards. Lost and, my wallet and my suit. You didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah. It like How? Fe it fell out of my pocket. My, my pockets are like not that deep. So it like fell out of my pocket at some point. So I lost that. And the suit? And like my top. Yeah. That was my fault. Like that, I, I walked out without my suit. How much? <laughs> I don't even want to ask. I'm not even going to ask. But. I can't. But right, Poppy is like, Poppy is like a club where you lose something, it's gone forever, right? Oh, goodbye. It so pop. So, so I, um, I we called the next day, and I remember my friends like I was calling like Noelle because everybody has a connection to Poppy, and they're all like saying we've all lost many things there. You're like you're not getting it back. Like just the just jacket kind or the of wallet. like give it up. The, everything, okay. everything, and I call. And they're not picking up, they're not answering. I'm like, oh, okay, this might be a nightclub where they just don't even uh -huh. answer their phones. Like, so fuck this. I'm I'm gonna have to get a wallet, and fucking replace everything. This this sucks. And then and then they called they called Noelia and they go, We found his wallet, you're not gonna believe it. And Noelia calls me, he's like, This might be the first time this has ever happened, but they found your wallet. Oh, cool. and I was like, oh my god. Thank God. Unbelievable. But I was like, I don't have my suit. I paid a lot for that suit, and I got like I had it for Less than fucking 15 hours. Like, yeah. that sucks. Like, that's so irresponsible of me. And then I decide I'm going to just check my DMs because I check my DMs sometimes. And then this random ass girl. Somebody found your suit Random jacket? ass girl goes, hey, by the way, I have your suit. What? Whoa. If you ever like, want to pick it up. It? I don't know. And how did she know it was like mine? Right. Weird. Oh, she remembers. But like, I took it off the minute I got in. 
It was just your jacket. You just like laid it, it on just the my couch. Jacket. I like laid it down. Oh, did she take it right away? Were you, were she you, she was you, like she, waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cold in here. Yeah. I'm just gonna DM him in the morning and say that I have it so I can see him. Probably, but like he, the way she's like wearing like the girls that wear like the guys with suit. the arms not in the <laughs> yeah, in just the draped, draped yeah. over the shoulders. <laughs> cover, cover your ears. Cover your ears. Just draped over the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun. I'm trying. But to like I, I'd never seen the girl in my life. I was like, oh my god. I thought I was never. We're gonna see that suit. Thank you so much. Like, when can I pick it up? So I'm waiting for her to respond. Whoo! So I got. She's gonna. Got. She's gonna she's charge you to go pick it up. She she wants fifty bucks 50 and bucks. a and a thing of bubble yum and a date. See, I'm nice. You're gonna like. Oh my god! You have it open. There's gonna be like a note. Like, just thought <laughs> I'd say hi. I took care of it. <laughs> <laughs> I took care of it. <laughs> you know, I it's you, dry cleaned. Well, thank goodness. Yeah. Well, you must have been having a good time that you took off your jacket. Were you dancing? Oh, I was dancing the night away. I was, I, well, I was drink. I was get, I was getting drunk for you too. Good. I, you I was, ha I was, ha I'm, ha you were in a good mood. I was very, very happy for I you. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I was in a good mood. I think your medication's working. <laughs> That's okay. I don't that's, know why I was. Why was I in a good mood? Like he was. In, you were in such a good mood where I was so happy for you while I was there, and then that's why I was so bummed on leaving because it just looked like it was, a, it was the perfect evening. Everything was added up. Yeah. Where you and me, we could have just geeked out and had even more fun. I know we would have. Would yeah. have. And knowing that I had to walk away. Yeah. From all that, it was like, really sad. Yeah, I was bummed. Heart broke. But you knew, like, I wouldn't leave. I, no, I knew you had something wrong. Like, I knew, like, Matt has something serious going on. What if I like wear like like a bracelet now, Mariah? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like a appendicitis survivor. Like, I I, I, I overhype how big of a deal it is. Like, <laughs> Like a, like a like a limp strong bracelet, but a bad I like I put the date in my bio. On my, my, <laughs> stop! Never forget. <laughs> oh, this it's. Oh. You know you how you keep like, your hospital bracelet on for a couple weeks. <laughs> you know how people put like bracelets oh. on that say like their medical conditions yeah. if they're like something ever happens. <laughs> Yours just says like. <laughs> your appendix are moved. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like saving a concert. The first responders like, show up. They're like, "What?" <laughs> every every selfie. <laughs> I, I enter like walkathons and stuff about like, "Hey guys, I'm running for <laughs> our first appendix Five. removal influencer." Oh, I actually do have something embarrassing Five K that run for that happened to us, or it happened to me at the airport. I don't know if it's gonna, you guys are gonna think this is silly, but it was just like an embarrassing moment. When we were on our way to the airport, it was the day that Queen Elizabeth passed away. Mm -hmm. So- What? <laughs> she, Stupid. She what? <laughs> <laughs> and we were grabbing snacks and the magazine section right in the middle was Queen Elizabeth on the cover of a magazine. But I, a part of me, maybe you'll understand this. I was like, I have to buy this. It's the last magazine where she's alive. <laughs> He's stupid, Mariah. <laughs> like, oh. just to have. Like, she was on the it's cover. It's kind of cool. She, oh, th th she it's was on the, the cover. We just found out hours before that she passed away. Oh. That's kind of cool. Okay, thank you. You get it. So it we're like, a part okay. of me, my We should probably was, get yeah, it. It's like, it's like when- That's crazy. When your parents have newspapers of Michael yeah. Jackson passing yeah. or like 9-11. Like, I just felt like I needed to grab it. But I gave, <laughs> so Heath also got like a car magazine. So I gave him both the magazines- and I slid and it underneath. he put it underneath and he goes, I don't know, it just feels embarrassing to buy this. Like, Everyone knows she just passed and away. And I'm here with like, the, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just like, I felt really funny about like, it. Like it's a little embarrassing to like have that. Like he's like, I'm really buying like a queen. Like everyone knows, everybody knows. Yeah. Like, it like, looked like, right. like, oh, was okay. the title of the magazine like long live the queen? Like, well, it was something close to that. I'll, I'll, I'll grab it for you. But it was something similar where it was like, the most iconic moments of the queen, like she passed, but she did. But it was clearly it was like, made whoa. before. You know what I mean? Made before. Oh, interesting. Wait, very what if weird. That, I, I have a feeling they. I have a feeling they. It was all planned. They. I feel like they knew when it was going to happen. Don't get heat started on plans. <laughs> Maybe um, no. Wait. I, this is this may be fucked up. What if she's been like dead passed for, for like a week? Yeah. And they're like, we can't announce it yet. Let's just plan all this shit out and then announce could've that she been. just passed today. Could have been. Could have been. Could have been. Could have been, but that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people right, you got to keep the information finish really quick. away from. So we're already embarrassed. He's he's buying the magazines, right? And he gives me the plastic bag to um, hold on to. I like stuffed it down. I was yeah, just like, while here, he runs to the this. bathroom. So we're both laughing like, this is so embarrassing. And then I go to our <laughs> gate to wait. 
And at the LA airport, some of the um, walkways are like on a ramp. Uh huh. <laughs> like they're slanted. So I put the plastic bag down to put my other bags down. I put it down and the weight of the water bottles in the bag made it fall over. So everything in the bag fell. The The Queen Elizabeth magazine slapped on the ground and spun like a movie in the middle of the walkway and her face is up like this. But I, and, and, and it makes a loud sound. Like picture like a book slamming on the ground. Yeah. It was so loud. Everybody looked. Looked at it. And it was obviously me because the water bottles are rolling down the, <laughs> the ramp. Queen is so dancing on the I floor. I can't go for the magazine. I got to go for the rolling water bottles. So I'm running trying to grab the water bottles. Everyone's looking at me. Then I have to pick up the, the Queen Elizabeth magazine. It's like in school where you have like something embarrassing and it drops out of your locker and yeah, like the it's boy bad. looks. It's like someone slaps your, your notes. Uh, your sorry. It's, 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 nothing. it's nothing. It's stupid it's a, anyways. It's a song. It's stupid anyways. Just, just some poetry I've been writing. Is the whole Oops. magazine about the Queen or was it like a... I'll, I'll grab it. You want me to get it right now while you guys talk? Sure. I'm just curious of like why you had to, you felt like you had to hide this magazine so bad. It's it's just because it was the she day she passed. Died, like, so Be like respectful. Pe so people looking like okay, you know what I mean? It's very. I'm just surprised you even felt like that. Like where are you 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 would worry I would have been like, isn't people. this crazy? Yeah, she's just died and there's and, this. And you're saying she had she didn't pass for another two hours, right? When you picked up the magazine? No, she had died like hours before. Oh, hours before. But the magazine okay. is something that was just on the shelf, like they had stocked beforehand. Got it. So everybody knew the queen had passed. So it just felt like I was like hopping on some trend, and it's like, oh, now he wants to buy a Queen magazine. You know what I mean? It was just like very weird. Uh, I guess I get what you mean, but it's like an airport, like yeah, it's like you're on a plane. You're just like, oh, let me just read up on the Queen because I don't know the Queen at all. We should have had her on. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why. It's like, it's the okay. bright green. It the... says it says milestones in her seventy year reign because it's her platinum jubilee. That's not a Barbie on the back of that. Guys. Oh, why well, have I have Princess Diana that is doll. That's creepy. I have a Princess Diana doll. My, we my mom does. We should have had her on. <laughs> I think we should have. <laughs> but imagine it this. It would have been a great episode. Imagine she just passed and then this is like spinning <laughs> on the, the ramp and I have to run after her. It's just, I don't know how to explain like why it's embarrassing. The platinum She's Jubilee. so funny. Oh, the whole, it's, oh, it's all about the queen. The whole matter. Where's Diana? <laughs> Where's Diana? <laughs> Doesn't seem like there's a lot of pictures of Diana. Yeah, bring Diana back. I wonder if Diana's even in this. Probably. I've been in that room. Hmm. Okay, so I I thought it was like a Vogue magazine and her face was on it. But that's like, that's like, that's yeah, Queen so Elizabeth magazine. Yeah, <laughs> like she has a whole. Oh, Royal Insider Magazine. Royal Insider Magazine. A pop culture and historical legacy. What if she was like, <laughs> <laughs> just like guys <laughs> that, be respectful that, don't like she ran say that, that Leah Michelle <laughs> say that. that say that photo Leah Michelle <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Matt the crown <laughs> okay <laughs> now Elizabeth can we just uh, <laughs> just uh, bearing the, the the weight of the have you seen the meme of her on the on the gate <laughs> <laughs> she would think this would be funny, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. She, I think she would find this funny. What's sure. the What's the stick called? If she uh, If she understood, she's like, <laughs> like or like Lady like Gaga, a lollipop. Lady Gaga's like monsters ball, just like <laughs> Rama Rama. Jesus, she's holding like a giant jewel, like a gem. <laughs> like, 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 er, 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 <laughs> big ass ruby. Don't start. Oh my god. Or she has like she's having like a tea, like a, a cup of tea, but there's like a bit of lipstick. And she's like, <laughs> no, it's like it's like smeared like this. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's like. Not only does she ride, she slide, <laughs> ride and slide. 
<laughs> Todd sent me a picture. Wait, he sent it to me I was too. Like, huh? I thought it was like a cult meeting, but it's just Lazy Dog. Oh. But <laughs> oh my god, the umbrella. Is that it lo- Lazy Dog? The umbrellas. Oh. The umbrellas look bitch. like people in sheets. Insane. Honestly, being the queen sounds exhausting. It does. I feel like they don't really do much. The amount of people you got to, places you got to go, people you got to talk to. I have a question. Uh, this is a little controversial, right? So you don't bear, have the fr- bear with it's me. It's nice, but you don't have the freedom. Why do like half the people despise her, and uh, the other half the people are like? Well, people have her as like the novelty. It's always like the queen. You do love the queen. Long is there the something queen. like that politically? She's done that politically, we, you can look at a lot of d- different things. That England does. Ha- every country has blood on their hands about something, and that there were times where English. Uh, did have like colonial rule on like a lot of other countries, and there were times where like she kind of did nothing. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, I mean, the like, queen can't like. There's, really uh, do there's, much. but then there's also still like the a lot of separation of power of like what the monarchy can't control versus what British Parliament does. Yeah. So, That's people love it's like oh it's the queen we love the queen, and then some people who just want to make it about politics like okay yeah a lot of bad people do a lot of bad things. Got it. Or a lot of, I don't know. But the thing is, is like, I didn't share. I, I think it's sad the queen died. Like, oh, she was like fun to watch throughout history. But like. I think it's more like, she was 96, you know? I think it was time. <laughs> so we're celebrating. No, I'm saying that in a good way. Like. I think it was time I'm for sure her if you're If you're 96 years old, I think you're ready. If, if I was 96, I think I'm ready to go. I know, but I'm I, sure but, she oh, would like, be the queen. You'd be like, I want to be the one who lived for to a hundred. Imagine that feeling though, when you you have that reflection and you or you're you're talking to yourself, and you come to terms with being like, I'm. It's time for I'm good. I'm good. Like oh, it's time if I was 96, I'd be like four more years. I want to get to a hundred. Yeah. Like if I was 92, I'd be like, well, it may happen anytime. But once you get to 96, you're like four more. Come on. Get it together. You're trying to be real healthy. You're eating nothing but fucking greens. And I just think if you get that close to 100, that's like, go, 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 go. go, go. go. Like you're almost there. As soon as you turn 100. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, I was thinking about that with uh, Betty White, where I was like, they I had know. to been like, Betty, hold, this oh, yeah. will be great what, for the brand. What age was she when she died? 99, wasn't yeah. she? She was close. Because she was going to turn 100 this year year wow she was she is she was a legend now we got to worry about dolly don't go <laughs> dolly far don't make unnecessary journeys don't stay yeah, it's gonna be a little tough for dolly Parton to get to 100 no how old is she dolly know. Parton ain't gonna be making it to 100 There's no, no one lives like 100 with like fake boobs that big <laughs> that's, that, well, that's well matt i didn't want to say imagine it. She, like, that is a foreign it. substance. No one is going to make it to 100 <laughs> with huge fake titties. I'm sorry. It would be really interesting seeing a 100-year-old with just <laughs> fake boobs. Yeah, no, I that know. Oh, be. my God. Big, big boobs. Big boobs. <laughs> Do you think you're like Dolly Parton's Nevermind? <laughs> Tombstone. <laughs> Instead of one hump, it's two. It's... <laughs> <laughs> that is good. So, she would find that funny. She would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, would, she would find. It. She probably makes dead jokes all the time. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out Cremota Coffee at Cremota.com. We got ground coffee. We've got K cups, a bunch of different flavors. We got different mugs. We got a whole bunch of different styles, clothing, hats, you name it. Uh, also, make sure to check out our Patreon, patreoncom slash Zane and Heath. You Uh-oh. get early access to all of these episodes. You see them a couple days early. They're going to be ad free, and we post a once a month high bonus episode we're either high or drunk we've had a bunch of different guests on so make sure to check that out we have a drunk episode up right now with Kelsey and Noelia so Mm -hmm. make sure to check it out it's really funny and we also have a private discord we do a live Q&A every month and we just post a bunch of behind the scenes just fun stuff oh you can check out the audio form of this podcast every Monday on Spotify on Google Pandora Um, that's right and uh, check out the video version of this podcast on YouTube youtube youtube.com slash Zane and Heath we love you guys Thank Bye you so guys. much for watching. Toodles. Bye.